So hello and welcome student to the to this lecture and this is course number MA412 linear algebra. And this is lecture number uh, lecture number 23. Okay. Now recall in our last lecture uh, we have learned about uh, uh, inner product spaces, inner product. Okay, and what was that? So you have a vector space with uh, what is inner product? We have vector space and a map. And what is this map? So the map is from V to uh, the field where F is um, either real or complex. Okay, in this case. And it satisfy a uh, few properties then we call this is inner product and b with this inner product is called the inner product space okay that we discuss and today we will start with uh, some of the properties um, so properties properties of this inner product Okay, so so I'm assuming that V is in a product space. Uh, so so this I'm assuming. Okay, so uh, V is a or an in a product space. Over uh, the field F, F is either real or complex number. Okay. So, uh, so with this assumption, uh, the first property which I should say that uh, suppose we have vector say uh, x1, x2, x in, in many vectors, and then uh, if you if sum this, suppose you have linear combination of those vectors say uh, ai, xi, i equal to 1 to n, and you want to know what is the number of of this with the number vector y. Then the inner product of this is nothing more exactly. I first take individual inner product. So, first individual inner product xi of y, and then this is actually sum over this i equal to 1 to n. Okay, and this is uh, almost obvious, but uh, let me give you a proof, quick proof. Uh, so, so you use the property of uh, in a product that linear. In, I mean, but in definition, linear is first argument, right? So, in linear in first argument. Uh, so, you can write down this sum till n minus one will be one element, and sum with another element, which is the n element, right? So, you can write down this in a product as this one equal to sum over i equal to one to n minus one. Yeah, xi plus a in xn with the number of two i right. Well, we know that this is linear in first argument, so we can have two inner product. Okay, and the first one, the last one is this xn y a in xn y. The first one has we have sum right n minus one. Now you can use induction on that n that is gives you that uh, this theorem is true or you can do this process uh, n minus 1 times or is the actual induction on n right so you assume that from this on n equal to 1 this is true because uh, this is a, yeah okay so this is obviously this true when n equal to 1 that is the property of others uh, by definition but uh, you assume that is true for n minus 1 and then uh, and this will be n minus one term in here. So from this, uh, this is in this matter. Okay. So that's why I'm writing because this uh, this is almost obvious. Okay. So uh, so similarly, uh, there are so many other small but important properties like uh, we define it by linear in first argument. Okay. And uh, uh, the first property was uh, first. Uh, uh, property was uh, additive in first argument and then uh, when you multiply by scalar in first argument it will come out right similarly you can also prove that um, 
this also can be additive in the second argument. What does that mean? That means you take an apparatus of x with uh, y plus z, then it is nothing but uh, an apparatus of x comma y and plus an apparatus of x comma z. And proof is also not difficult, but uh, let me just quickly give you the proof. So just write down this this as uh, we use the definition. So in definition, you remember um, when you take bar, so in a product will kind of um, it's not symmetry, it's kind of conjugate symmetry, right? So what does that mean? That means it will be nothing but y plus c x whole bar, right? But this right hand side, you know that it will um, split because this is uh, additive in first argument, so you can split this thing. Okay, and then um, you know that uh, a plus b whole bar equal to a bar plus b bar, so you can write down this y x bar plus z x bar. But again, the property tells you that this is x to y, the same third property and uh, x z. Okay, so that 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 gives you that uh, thing is that this inner product is also additive in the second argument, right? Now, the method question you can ask uh, what about first column multiplication? So, what does that mean? That means you multiply uh, scalar in the second argument, okay. Mm, then what happened? Uh, and uh, let's see then what happened. Then uh, then this actually not see this c bar times x y and this is complex conjugate. In case when it is real vector space, then it is c times that. Okay. In general, this is true. Q R of this. And the proof is also very simple. So you start with x c y. And you do the same thing, so c y x whole bar, right? And then you know that this is c times y x because uh, c comes out from first argument whole bar. But then you have uh, two uh, scalars, one is c and one is this, and you have bar there, bar when you complete conjugate, so that is nothing but c bar times. Uh, this y x bar okay, but y x bar is nothing but c bar times y okay. So, what is the proof? And this property number two and three, you can actually uh, together you can say that inner product is actually nothing called conjugate linear in the second argument okay. So, this property. Plus one is together called conjugate linearity. The conjugate linear in the second argument. Okay. Uh, now, uh, uh, next property, property number four. Um, uh, if you take uh, in a, any any vectors with zero vector, then the inner product will be always zero, and the same as for zero vector with any other vectors. It's always zero. Okay. And what is the proof? The proof is um, uh, so. So let me start with that first. If you take this, if you want to know what is this, then you apply the fact that zero plus zero is zero. Okay, and then uh, by definition, this is uh, 0, comma x in a product of that plus you know, in a product of 0 plus x. Okay, clear. But th this is kind of uh, inside the field, right? Inside the field, you can do cancellation. So, so, so left hand side, you have 0 plus this, it will be cancellation, so you have 0 x, 0, right? And same thing you can do it for uh, x. This also, so this is you can write down x comma zero plus zero. Okay, and with that you can write down that x zero plus in a product with x with zero, and that will give you the fact that in a product of x with zero 
Okay, so so what does that mean? That means when you take the inner product of any element, it is zero vector. The integer value is zero. Okay, and then um, so this is number four, and uh, this is number five. Um, what happens if you take inner product of um, some element with the same element? Okay, so for example, uh, what about this? You know that this is. Uh, positive e x not equal to zero, but for x equal to zero, we just learn that this is zero, but the converse is also true, so that means this is zero if and only if x equal to zero. Okay, and obviously, um, one part we just prove right now, right? If x equal to zero, then x x. That is right, and conversely, uh, conversely, if x comma x equal to zero, then uh, x has to be zero, as x not equal to zero implies by definition, x comma x is positive, right? This is by definition. So what does that mean? That means uh, if you want to take in a product of element B itself, then it is always non-zero unless the element itself is zero. Okay, this is the meaning of this. Okay, so now um, uh, these are the few of the important properties of inner product. Now with the help of all this property, you can actually define or you can realize uh, something called the idea of length. And you can uh, define something we, we call is a norm, which is actually generalization of length. Okay, then how do you define this uh, the idea of norm? So definition. So let um, the uh, this the uh, uh, inner product space. Okay, and then uh, we define we define uh, the length or, or, or norm of vector norm of a vector so v belongs to v by this quantity. So so this is a symbol norm v. So this is nothing but a positive square root of inner product of v. Because we know that uh, when uh, this, there are two options, if v equal to zero, then uh, in a product of v will be zero. So, so that that thing gives you that square will gives you zero. But if it is uh, non-zero v, then this is always positive. So you have square root x square root of x, right? So by this we define the norm, and this is actually generalization of length. We will see it by example. Okay. So, so uh, in, in fact, we can define uh, the norm uh, norm map with the properties of some of the properties that we are going to prove it right now. Okay, but uh, let me just first define this is my norm on any inner product space. Okay. Uh, okay. So now, uh, and obviously, with, with this to do the inner product. If you change inner product, you can change the norm. Okay. And this theory we learn in, um, in more in uh, functional analysis that when you have inner product, then you can define norm by this. So uh, there is something called norm linear space that you can define with the help of inner product also. So every inner product space is a norm linear space. But converse is not true. So there you can have a norm which is not coming from any norm. That was also possible. Okay. So now, uh, so uh, example, let me give. Uh, 
example. The standard example, the, we choose that uh, standards for example, RN uh, with the with, uh, standard email product which we defined uh, in the last lecture, okay, with uh, standard inner product okay so this is an inner product uh, then you can understand why we call this is a length so for example if you say a vector v and we say v1 v2 and vn so this is in coordinates and now if you want to define this norm of v then by definition it should be of this product of this b with v right in a product of v with v so what is in a product of v with v so by definition this is sum over um, the v i and um, v i v i bar so v i this is real in a product so by the same thing so v i square right i equal to 1 to n and you see that this is nothing but the equivalent distance right or length okay so equivalent length you can say that Okay, so this is actually Euclidean length. Um, of many vectors in R L, right? Similarly, you can do it for C N also. Then it will be. A v i v i bar, but v i bar v i v i bar is nothing but more v i square, right? So instead of v i, you have v i square. Okay, so 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 it is clear that this norm is actually the relation of equivalent length. In case of standard inner product, they are equal actually. Otherwise, whenever you don't have this norm idea of standard inner product, uh, for example, in some vector spaces where you don't have this idea of equivalent length. Still, then you can define uh, this norm, which will be the generalization of this length. Okay, so um, now let me um, give some important properties as a part of the theorem. So, which actually uh, deals with inner product uh, this uh, norm, the theorem. Okay, so uh, let uh, same thing. So we have uh, V and this is not a V and in a product space. Okay, uh, so over some field F. And then, then uh, for any then for any you want to be whatever it becomes f and then constant belong to f. Uh, uh, we have the following property. Following properties. Okay, what are the properties? So, uh, first one is when you take a vector and a scalar, and if you want to take the norm of that, it's nothing but uh, that mod of that scalar. This, this is maybe copy number, so you know the mean of mod with the norm of that vector. Okay. This first property and the proof is also simple. Proof. So uh, this quantity C X norm is nothing but the positive square root of the product of C X comma C X. Okay. And we know that uh, from C X the C can comes out. Okay. 
and the second property tells you that uh, from second argument c bar will comes out it says right and uh, c c bar is nothing but mod c whole square within a square of x x and when it comes out that this uh, square root then it becomes mod c the square root of in a product of x root x itself but this is nothing but the norm of x okay so this is the norm c the norm of x so this is the first property okay and second property uh, is also same thing is that this norm of any vector is always non zero uh, non negative okay this is for all x belongs to v and uh, moreover, uh, this is zero if and only if x equal to zero. But that is obvious from the property of inner product. Okay, because uh, norm of x is equal to square cos square root of this x root x. So whenever x equal to zero, then inner product of x root x equal to zero. In that case, norm is zero, right? Conversely, obviously. And otherwise, it is positive square root of u x not equal to zero. Then it is positive square root of in a product of x which is positive. So this will now will be positive. So this is obvious. So the proof is trivial, right? So we can do that uh, no more, no more. Okay. Now let me define the most important property of this norm, and this is called. Number three is Cauchy's Law Inequality. What is that? Cauchy's Law. This is the H W R T. So what's inequality? Now what is Cauchy's Law Inequality? Tells you so that tells you when you take inner product of two vectors. So this can be complex number, right? Because the field may be complex also. And if you take the more value, that means you want to do it in the positive thing, then then it is actually bounded by the individual norm, norm of x is the norm of y. Okay. This is amazing property, and you will find out there are so many problems can be can use uh, this inequality to solve those problems. Okay. The proof. There are several proofs. So let me give one easy proof uh, that tells. Okay, so, so what happen if uh, this y equal to zero? If y equal to zero, then obviously this is trivial because this will right hand side is zero, left hand side is also zero, right? And then uh, this inequality will equally to this trivial, right? Because both right hand side and left hand side is um, zero. Okay, so I can assume that y not equal to zero. So assume assume that y not equal to zero. Okay. Now with this assumption, uh, and you choose uh, so let uh, you choose some c which is arbitrary belongs to f b any arbitrary scalar you can choose later on what is c arbitrary scalar okay now with with this choice of uh, uh, with this uh, we can we can say that this uh, this norm of x minus c times y this is by property 2 it is always greater than equal to 0 right but uh, then we will use the definition of this so this is in a product of x minus cy comma x minus cy right so this is this term is always positive okay so so, so sorry non negative and again the property of in a product tells you that this is x comma uh, this and uh, plus minus c y comma x minus c y this is greater than zero and then from this first one 
also you can you can separate it if you separate it you will have any x x okay uh, and then uh, minus x c y right but c c will come outside by c bar so minus c bar of x y similarly uh, here you will have minus p y of x minus p y which is going to zero right and next what you can write down you can write down that okay so x x c r x y so in the product of x x minus c r of in the product of x y and the third term will be what so x y so this is minus c of y of x and the fourth term will be what it is uh, minus one over plus so c c bar okay so this is plus c c bar of uh, y y in a product of y with y and this quantity is greater than equal to zero okay now i will choose a particular c for which uh, the magic happened and then we will get our uh, cost of source in the quantity so uh, this is this is true for any c right so now choose uh, you see is this quantity in a product of x y divided by in a product of y y now this is obviously scalar right this is a scalar element it belongs to f now if you choose this c then what happen then the magic will happen because the first quantity will be in this norm of obviously x in the second quantity when you plug those thing in then you will see that um, so uh, c bar means X, x x y bar by y bar right but this is norm y right? norm y is what norm y is non negative so bar will be all the same thing so this will be mod of x n quantity will become more of this whole square divided by norm of y uh, square now this is all square yeah. because this is in a product of excess okay. and what will be the third quantity so the third quantity will be um, minus c times this so uh, c times in a product x y into in a product y x but y x is nothing but x y bar so it will be again um, in a product of x y norm of whole square okay and then uh, this is norm of y square right and what will be the fourth quantity? Fourth quantity is now we have C C bar. C C bar means mod of C whole square and that will give you uh, mod of C whole square means mod of x comma y whole square and and then divided by this is uh, this is uh, norm of y whole square and then square but here you have one more norm of y square is there right so that get cancelled and you'll have only one but again you see that uh, there are uh, two negative term one positive term that also get cancelled and then finally you'll have a uh, norm of x square minus uh, uh, mod of x y bar whole square uh, i mean mod of in a product x y whole square here it by normal y square this is non negative greater than equal to zero and done so this is a magic so so if you and take the other side and take uh, multiply norm y square then you'll have mod of x y in a product of this whole square is less than equal to norm of x in the norm of y and hence mod of um sorry this whole square and there are also is the yeah, whole square right if you take the positive square root, so you will have this less than equal to norm of x into norm of y. And this is the same as cosy swords in a quality. Cosy swords. Okay. So this, this is a very, very important uh, property of norm and that uh, is very useful in many places. Okay. But uh, now we will define that. Uh, oh my God. 
Yeah, so now we will define this uh, the another property for blocking quadrant is called triangle integrity. Triangle integrity. And what it said is said that whenever you are taking norm of sum of two vectors is actually bounded above by norm of x plus norm of y. Okay. And uh, uh, this is the proof is also not very difficult. Okay. So what I'll do, so I will start with the square which is it gives you the inner problem, right? So suppose we start with this norm of this whole square which is in a product of x plus y with this set. Okay, now now we just use the property. So this is in a product of x x and then uh, uh, y x and then x y. Okay, and then in a product of y y right. Then with property, and now um, so so the so first quantity this is actually this norm of x square. My second quantity I can write down this as uh, in a product of y x bar plus in a product of y x. The third one is norm of y x whole square. Right? Now if we have a complex number. Uh, and then it's conjugate if you take sum, then it will give you that twice the real part, right? Because in a given part will cancel. So this will not be work. And now of x squared plus twice of real part of in a product of x y plus this norm of y squared. Okay. Yes, so yeah, so first of all. So now, uh, with this help of this, you can you can say that uh, this norm of x plus y whole square is actually nothing but okay. So now the, we have to do estimate. Now this real part of uh, this real part of any any complex number is actually less than equal to the mod of the complex number, right? Because imaginary part can be non-zero also. If the imaginary part is not zero, then real part. Uh, and I mean, then the mod value is same as the real part, right? Otherwise, it is mod value is always bigger than equal to the real part, right? So you can you can you can say that this is bounded by norm of x plus two times uh, this mod of this. I just take a better bound for real part of x and then this is the norm of y square right now you see that um, this quantity is actually bounded by the real norm by process words so you can write down this is norm of x into norm of y plus norm of x square so this is because of process words in the quantity process words Okay, now this is obviously a square plus 2ab plus b square. So this is uh, again nothing but norm of plus norm of y whole square, right? Now you take the square root both sides of the square root that gives you mod of norm of x plus y less than equal to norm of x plus norm of y. Okay, done. Okay, uh, so, so this is the proof of triangle equality. Okay, so now uh, now it is uh, obvious. Okay, so uh, so so the way we, we we prove this property that it gets us to define the map for norm map, uh, and uh, we can we can define see uh, we define uh, the norm with respect to uh, uh, with respect to the inner product, right? But if we don't have inner product, then how do I define the norm? That you can define there. Okay. So so definition. 
and uh, this is uh, I don't need any inner product for this purpose so I can only assume that my vector space is over some real field or complex field that is enough for me okay so let uh, me be a vector space over f which is real or complex okay uh, and then we define a map this is we call the norm map this is from v to uh, r so this, this is my uh, real world function on v and uh, so this, I, I should say in fact i can say that this is r plus zero r plus zero means what this is R positive union then zero. It can be taking zero value or positive real number. Okay. Now what is the map? So this map satisfy these properties. So this is we choose any vector, then this is always non-negative, and uh, uh, this is zero if and only if this if and only if you are this zero, this is first property. So I'm defining this norm by this. Number two is what? Number two is when you multiply by a constant, so this will be this uh, mod of that times norm of x. And number three, the, uh, the very important triangular inequality. What is that? We just prove it. Is n equal to norm of x plus norm of y. So if if you have a map from a vector space to this r plus dot or this in a zero vector satisfying any of this condition then we call this map is a norm map okay norm a norm on that vector space okay and the vector space with this norm is called the norm linear space okay so we we with this norm is called a norm linear space Yes, and for this you don't need you don't need inner product. You can define with the inner product. Okay. Uh, now, now let us give an example uh, that how um, this kind of thing happens. So again, uh, let me take the standard inner product that we have discussed. Okay, so um, it's B equal to say, uh, let, me, let me take it now Cn, last time I did for it Rn, right? Some complex, uh, complex you know, product space of dimension n, and I have vector say x equal to x1, x2, xn, and y equal to y1, y2, yn. Okay. Then, then, um, uh, what, what does Cauchy Schwarz say? Cauchy Schwarz says that this if you take an product with x, y, and then the take norm, this is bounded by uh, this mod, then this is bounded by product of the individual norm, right? And that tells you that left hand side is what? Left hand side is nothing but psi y i bar, uh, and then sum over i cut 1 to n. So this quantity take we take the norm is bounded by individual norm. So individual norm means what? X i bar whole square i cut one to n. This is the first quantity. And norm means square root, right? So uh, whole is half. Okay. And then um, second quantity um, norm of I equal to 1 to n and then on to the power half. So th this identity is actually coming from Cauchy's order. This is a Cauchy's form of Cauchy's identity for a standard in the product. So this is standard. Standard. And product. Okay. Similarly, you can you can think uh, what would be that 
triangle will look in this case so uh, that tells you that this plus this is bounded by norm of x plus norm of y uh, but uh, in the left hand side we will have a function of xi plus yi and um, uh, xi plus yi mod whole square i equal to 1 to n in the whole to the power uh, half and the right hand side is bounded by individual one so that is xi whole square to the power half plus some xi and yi to the power half i equal to 1 to n here also i equal to 1 to n so this key inequality uh, is actually coming from this uh, individually for short and the triangle inequality that is in this both identity and inequality is for chanda inner product on cn okay okay uh, i hope so so now uh, we are going to define another important idea uh, okay something called the idea of orthogonality so what is that so in, in remember in, in in physics what you learn so, so in, in physics remember if you have like two dimension other dimension of the space whatever we choose say two two vectors or something like this and this and if you want to define dot product remember in a product is a dot product right so dot product of two vectors say x and y then why you do so you take this angle between that suppose it's theta then you define the dot product by um, this inner product which is nothing but your Julian norm and the angle between these two vectors which is a cosine of that angle right cosine theta okay and when this theta is 90 degree means cosine theta equal to 0 right so uh, when uh, cosine theta equal to 0 this implies this implies implied by uh, x is perpendicular to y let me write down this symbol this is the meaning of perpendicular okay so let me write down perpendicular Okay, so what does that mean? That means you can you can define similar things uh, uh, when cos theta equal to zero. So this quantity vanishes. So that means in a product vanishes, right? With this idea from physics, we can define, we can realize this idea inside any general vector space, uh, any general nonlinear in a general inner product space. Okay, so in general inner product space, how do we define this? So definition. Again, so let V is V in inner product space over that F, which is R or C. Okay, so um, uh, so so actually uh, we. we in, in physics we define for r only right but here we can also define for c like it doesn't it doesn't matter uh, which is that because we can define in a product for both right so in this case what you say we say that uh, we say two vectors x and y belongs to v um, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm saying that two vector means two distinct vector, right? If not distinct, then obviously we know what happened. Okay, and if it is zero, if both are, if x and y equal to same, and the product is zero, means it has to be zero, right? Otherwise, it's positive. So two vectors uh, are perpendicular. We define two vectors are uh, orthogonal. We write down the term orthogonal here. So orthogonal means actually so this is the idea of perpendicularness, right? For okay. 
So if what happen if the inner product of x and y is zero. Okay. So in this case we will say that these two vectors are orthogonal. So for example, the zero vector is orthogonal to f vector because if you take zero vector, uh, the inner product of zero vector with any vector will be zero. So zero vector is orthogonal to any vector. Okay. And um, so uh, this is one definition. Uh, so if this is a subset of V, and then is is called the orthogonal subset orthogonal subset if what happen if every element are orthogonal inside okay if every every element inside s is orthogonal Every element I mean uh, every element means uh, every pair I should say every pair of elements every pair of elements is orthogonal are uh, orthogonal to each other orthogonal each other okay so whenever you choose any two any two pair of elements so this thing i mean to say uh, a pair of I, I should say this thing okay this thing otherwise you may feel that same thing can happen no choose two distinct elements and check whether they are orthogonal or other uh, the inner product vanishes or not. If it is true for any two distinct pair, then we say this set is orthogonal set. Okay. And now, in addition, we can define something called orthonormal. For that, I need to define something called unit vector. What is that? So, um, so a vector a vector. V belongs to V is called an unit element if what happens is no V equal to 1 okay and if uh, and uh, so thus the set A subset of V is called an orthonormal set orthonormal set if something happen if what happen if um, if uh, a s is number one a s is orthogonal and number two is uh, elements of uh, s are all units and all the elements of S are units. Okay. So if this happens, then then we call that uh, S is an orthonormal set. Okay. So orthonormality means that orthogonal plus unit uh, elements of so every element has norm one okay now maybe uh, let me give some example again so uh, so suppose your v is r3 with when i'm saying r3 i mean with standard inner product And suppose my set is say, something say one one zero and then uh, one one uh, or rather yeah minus one one uh, set two and then three yeah 
So and then uh, another I will write down here one two I will take later. This one and then suppose uh, one and this is minus minus one and then this is minus second term if I take one so it will be one minus two so this is two then yeah I am just calculating for which this is the now you see that we said s is orthogonal actually why it is orthogonal uh, because if you take the number of any two elements you will say this is zero but this is not orthogonal one because the norm of these elements are uh, not one this for example what is norm of these elements the norm of this uh, root 2 right because in a product of this is this is equal to 2 so now we will do what is right Similarly, norm of this is root 3 now is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 4 root 6 so if you define a new set x dash by 1 by root 2 times 1 1 0 Similarly, 1 by root 3 times 1 minus 1, 1 and 1 by root 6 times minus 1, 1, 2. Then this will become orthonormal, right? So this is orthonormal. Ortho. This is orthonormal set and this one is only orthonormal set. Not orthonormal, right? And then, then, uh, then mathematically, how do you write down something of the normal? So, so we say that S is so thus you can understand that S is so suppose my S is something say V1, V2, Vk. So, S is orthonormal if you know, and only whatever the inner product of. V i V j this is a uh, conic i j delta i j right this is conic delta conic delta so when i come to j this is one otherwise zero right then you can start now right okay uh, maybe i should stop here because we have yeah so Let's stop here.